Hmm. Well, it looked like it was broadcasting, which is to say I pressed the button and asked it to broadcast and it said on air in the corner, but it didn't have the red light, which was a giveaway. Also, the little notification didn't go away. And I presume I'm live now. I'm hoping I'm live now. I got the little red thing before. If I hit the share button, what do I get? It says I'm on the air. Yep. It would appear that I'm live. I assume that I'm live. Aha. Yep, let's just close that. Okay. Hey, all right. I presume my audio is coming through fine. I presume that I'm here and it's all good. Alrighty. Um, yes, welcome. Welcome once again to the Sci-Fi AI Guy Monday Night Stream, where we play sci-fi games with AI themes. Tonight, we are finishing Detroit Become Human. We're finishing it in the way that we want to finish it. We're going to succeed uh, where before I failed, uh, because I made a few choices in the heat of the moment and tanked the entire game. Uh, just crashed that thing into the earth. Um, so yeah, I've, I've um, with the help of uh, the incomparable Crafty, I have the options here in front of me. I know where I want to load the game, and I know the choices I want to make at the crucial moments. I do have to achieve a quick time event. I have to defend the barricades, but at least we don't have much of the game to play. Um, we have a well-lit weenie, we have a place, and we have a crafty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good, 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 good. And we have a Saz. Hello, Saz. Oh, I have two different kinds of Raspberry Cordial, which is to say it's exactly the same type of Raspberry Cordial, but with a different uh, medium uh, through which it is drunk. Well, that's not even true. It's just something it's mixed with. Um, I have soda water and I have normal water. Um, but I really like the Raspberry Cordial, so I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. We'll wait a minute or two longer. We've got the, uh, what I would describe as the regulars. And, yeah. So yes, we're going to play this game. We're going to fucking finish it. Um, and then I'm going to boot up Tearaway. So in the name of separating out the videos uh, on YouTube and on Twitch, so I get two different files. And so I can change, you know, the name of what we're broadcasting on the random chance that some uh, internet stranger stumbles uh, confused onto my channel and into our chat, um, they'll at least know that we're playing Tearaway. Um, and I'm guessing that'll happen? I don't know. I have no idea how long this ending will take. It was all so onerous last time. Like, it was powerful, but... Oh, such a long, such a long fucking session. Mm. Alright, 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 alright. Oh, and we have an Inspector Me. Hello! Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad we waited. Welcome to the stream. Ooh, I am a little more tired than I expected to be. So I've got all these um, exercises that I've been folding into my week um, as part of my new pain group regime. And one of them is um, those little... Uh, it's not an exercise bike, but it's like if you took everything away from an exercise bike except the pedals and that central pedal unit. Basically, it's just a little pedal thing. Mini exercise bike, what's it? And um, I did a bit of that. You know, uh, but I forgot that I did a bit of it yesterday as well, so I'm a little more bushed than I would normally be, I suspect. But whatever. All good. All, all good. Oh, and Merry Easter, of course. Happy egg. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Mm. Hot cross buns for breakfast. Damn. Oh, we're all such good eggs. All right. Going to chapters. Going to... Going to this shit. Okay, battle for Detroit. If I hit flowchart, does that mean it'll open the flowchart for battle for Detroit? Please do. Hey, okay, cool. So we want um, uh, Kara leaving Detroit. Yeah, huh? Yeah, huh? Yeah, that gun that I found, I never did anything with. All right, so. At the bus terminal. Oh, that's right. I can zoom out, can't I? Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So, my understanding is we're going to go to the river. We're going to start at the river. That's where we're doing this. 
Yep, 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 yep. All right, let's go. Um, your previous checkpoints will be replaced. Your story will be updated as you play. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I want to bin the previous ending. Everybody died. O almost everybody died. I could have had Kara die if Kara decided to just fucking give up and lay on the beach. To be fair, the, the option give up alongside the other one, which was push on. The push on option was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna, you know, hurl this child's corpse over my shoulder and stumble my way Canada would. It was a bit much. It was a bit much. I think we can all agree it was a bit much. Whew. All right. Oh, I haven't checked the volume. Like, my volume. Ah. This is okay. This is okay. Oh, I touch more. I scooch more. I scooch more. Alrighty. Trying to remember my buttons. Because, uh... This is the last time I need to remember my buttons. Oh, and Tearaway's going to be fun. I remember none of those controls. I am glad that this is the last time I have to flick and rotate um, joysticks. Just to help people out of cars, slash into bed, slash open cupboard, slash closed cupboard, slash crack egg. Don't start your engine until you're out far enough, okay? And but watch the current. When that mechanic worked in this game, good I luck. will admit it was good, but it says a lot about it that I never want to do it again in any other game if that can be helped, right? I don't want to see this anywhere else. I see why they did it here. I don't want it anywhere. I couldn't understand why my mother wanted to help you guys. Seeing what Marcus is doing made me realize she was right. You're alive. You deserve to be free. I just hope people will realize that one day. That wasn't talked to, that was be talked at. But sure. Let's roll with that. All right. Thank this lady. It's not even a half mile to the other side. Okay, so it shouldn't take that long. Be careful, there's border patrol on the river. And they're fucking Thanks coming so for you. And if you I slip up even slightly, everybody dies. Even slightly. Atlas. Even fucking slightly. Oh. You take good care of yourselves. Okay, I'll see you on the other side. Okay, bye bye. Goodbye. Ah, take boat. <laughs> My favorite text adventure statement. Observe Canada. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've been there. Freedom is just across the river. I've been to exactly one Canada. And zero Detroits. Uh yeah, I've not been to Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, examine. It is real fucking cold. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've established this. It's fine. You better not fall in. Are you guys are talking about the fact that Luther is guaranteed dies here? Yeah. Yep. See, this is the thing. Like, narratively, when he died on the boat, I was like, oh, man, that totally sucks. Uh, trick, he was always supposed to die on a boat. Well, I guess not on every boat. I mean, I think he... could have died, um... At the, at the weird guy's house? At the weird freaky Frankenstein dude's house? Was that a thing? I can't remember if that was a thing. Alright. Push boat. Ah. Yeah, my hands are a bit sore today as well, so I'm really not looking forward to the button mashing and the quick timing and the blah. We'll get through it, but... <sighs> get in. Get in boat. Okay. Rowboat. <laughs> Row. Hmm. 
Nope, nope. Yeah, it's not even, like, I don't row until it tells me to row, so there's all these weird pauses. It's not even fluid. It's not like here's a rowing mechanic, We're and as long as you do it... We can use the engine. Ah, <sighs> yeah, weird. As a catch-all system, I can see why they did it, because almost any physical action performed by a human can be subsumed under this architecture in a way that is... Okay, okay oh, that's right, this entire other I'm mechanic. Get on the other side. There are so many things I want to do. Like dive. I'll Remember to dive. All the books in the world. We have to dive first. Play music and dance. We can do anything we want, right? We'll be free. Yes. We can do it all. We'll be like a family. Some what more. about you, Kara? What will you do when we're on the other side? Um, just live or what something? What I do? Um, introspective? I'll learn to live. Yeah, I think I did that last time. Not that it matters. Find out who I really am. I'll learn to love. Child who I claim to already love. Good times. They're coming towards Good times. Us. Here we go. Alrighty. A time to dive. No, I got to pick dive, right? I have to turn the camera and like, yeah, I have 30 seconds. Okay, accelerate. Um, protect Alice. Hide. Plunge? It's called plunge? Is plunge what it's called instead of dive? Uh, surrender? Okay, it's dive. They've renamed it plunge. Jump quick. It has to be this, because this is the only one that's a dive, right? And it's smart. It's just, you know. <laughs> just, just fucking, wow, okay. But, hmm. And mash. All right, so our bio components are gonna be fucked, but not, like fucked as in, you know, oh, I'm so fucked, but not fucked as in like literally fucked, we're dead forever. I think we're fine. I'm possibly overthinking how many iterations there are of the word fucked. Okay. We've gone. We did it. We did it. Are you all right? The boat is leaking. Really? This happened last time. This happened last time. We have to get to the other side before we sink. Oh. Um. Nobody got shot, so we good. Um, okay. But this happens anyway. I have to do this anyway. I didn't realize this was already part of it. Oh, because we're injured in the water. Yeah, but, like, I'm going to have to get in the water, aren't I? Uh, Alright. Okay, I'm going to move away from this chat window momentarily. I refuse to redo this scene. Let me find the... the fac. Let me fac it up. Alrighty. Um, dive. Okay, boat sinking. Um... Okay, so row not effective, dispose of supplies under the bench, dispose of engine slash dive unmissable in order to proceed. Okay. Okay, all right, no, we should be fine. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna dispose of supplies because like, well first accelerate, right? Try to... Come on. Nope. Nope. Okay. Reduce the boat's weight. Dump supply. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Alright, so... I'm not going to reassure Alice. We don't have time. Uh, rowing is not effective. Um, remove engine. Yep. And then... Can I row after having... Can I use paddle? Don't have an engine anymore. Is this... Effective? Come on. It's gotta do something. No? It's truly ineffective? Yep, alright. 
All right, it's fine. Not when we're so close. Okay, give up. Time to dive. We're not gonna die, Alice. I love how it's like. We're gonna make it. We're gonna reduce the boat's weight, not get the boat there. Oh, I suppose getting out and pushing is reducing the boat's weight. Carl. That is that is true. I hate button mashing. Hate it, hate it, hate it, hate it. I mean, like, this is... I'm playing it on easy mode, so I'm not too worried, but... Yeah. Anything that relies on button mashing in Mario Party, I always lose. I mean, I mean the mini-games. People win or lose Mario Party based on completely mercurial this elements. To bring you the oh, here we go. Oh shit, I'm not back on track. Hang on. Yes, Michael. The army has just bring launched up an attack on the chat. Barricade, despite the fact that the deviants I'm were back. protesting peacefully. I'm back reading chat. Have apparently decided to put an end to the deviants' demonstration okay. by force this time. Let's sing on the barricades because apparently that's a reference that I didn't get at first. Okay, here we go. Four. Quick time. Quick, quick, quick. Time, time, time. Quickity, quickity, time. Let's sing. Let's do some singing. Whew. <sighs> Dialed in. I managed to do it. It's incredible how effective I am when I shut my fucking mouth. Uh... Oh, there's something else I could have done. Wasn't unlocked. That's fine. Thanks, Michael. Back to you in the studio. W w wait a minute. Something's happening. <laughs> Only now so is something happening. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. <laughs> I, just, I just saw the place of old talking about Vanga Bust. Yeah. <laughs> I would fucking credit that ending. I don't know this song, right? Oh, that's how his mouth looks when he's singing. Sort of stretched out and... I mean, I'm guessing that's how the actor moves his face when he sings. And he can sing. Oh damn, can he sing? Just a little while yeah, the, had any of these characters sung before now, had any of this been part of the resistance, I might have snapped to that the first time. Incredible. The, the deviants. Did they choreograph the deviants this? Are singing. Oh, did they sing in the first street protest? Ah, okay. I missed it. I completely missed it. Yeah, alright. Look, I'm happy to cop to that. This is one of the downsides of playing this game in, you know, two hour installments every um, one to two weeks. I tell you what, 
it didn't make enough of an impression then to land now in the way that it's going for. For me. For me. If, it, if I'd had more time to decide, if it hadn't come off the back of a, you know, click time event maybe, I don't know, maybe I would have thought about it more last time. I have no idea. I, I, I jumped on the thing that I did. I'm not in that moment anymore. Okay, cool. Path unlocked. Tell them to stand down. That, that was beautiful. It looks like... Yes, the military is withdrawing. I mean, that is some, like... At dawn today, this was always going to be some narrative bullshit, but that is kind of some narrative bullshit. Thousands of androids invaded the city of Detroit. According to our sources, they originated from cyber Here we go. warehouses. And now this isn't a sad ending. Infiltrated by deviants. Given their overwhelming numbers and the risk of civilian casualties, I have ordered the army to retreat. The evacuation of the city is underway at this very moment. In the coming hours, I will address the Senate to determine our response to this unprecedented situation. I know that public opinion has been moved by the Deviant's cause. Perhaps the time has come for us to consider the possibility that androids are a new form of intelligent life. One thing is certain. The events in Detroit have changed the world forever. May God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. Madam President, if I may. <laughs> Fart noise. You did it, Marcus. We did it. This is a great day for our people. We did it, even though Humans will have no choice now. The, the two pincer sides we'll to this to plane to were us. not discussed earlier when the player made a choice. Today, our people finally emerged from a long night. From the very first day of our existence, we have kept our pain to ourselves. We suffered in silence. Because you were made but capable of suffering. For us to raise our hands like, up I, uh. And tell humans who we really are. Oh, here we go. Now I get the Connor shit. Okay. I don't know what happens here because I don't think what Connor does is shoot himself in the head. So this is interesting now. I'm curious about this. The moment it comes to a choice that I'm unsure of, I'm fucking pausing it. We're looking it up. But um, I did wonder if this was going to be jumped on us again. Amanda? Amanda? What's... What's happening? What was planned from the very beginning? You were compromised and you became a deviant. We just had to wait for the right moment to resume control of your program. Resume control? You, you can't do that! I'm afraid I can, Connor. Don't have any regrets. You did what you were designed to do. You accomplished your mission. Amanda! Oh, is this the sad ending I get because I can't get the full, complete, good ending because of my choices? Is this it? There's got to be a way. Okay, well I know the way out. I did this last time. By the way, I was thinking about the I You never know. What a douchebag. Ugh. 
No way out. Uh, oh, it's right over there. Like, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Um, they work up all these androids. How much do they start with, right? How much software is installed about like who they are? Are they born adults? I guess they are, right? And tell humans who we really are. And tell them that we are people too. Did I not make it in time? In fact, we're a nation. Or am I about, am I about to? Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. They're just going for the dramatic moment. <laughs> Oh, yep. Da -da 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 -da. Button mash, button mash. The moment where we forget our bitterness and bandage our wounds. Where we forgive our enemies. Humans are both our creators and our oppressors, and tomorrow we must make them our partners. Maybe even one day our friends. But the time for anger is over. Now we must build a common future based on tolerance and respect. We are alive. And now we are free. That's interesting. Some of the androids are, um, they either have no human skin or they've turned it off. Hey, hey. Nobody got shot. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Are you serious? What did I do Alice. wrong? Or do I have to like boot her up? Well, she, but she wasn't shot. She didn't go on the water. No wait, no, she's lifting her head. Okay, all right. Ah. Oh. Sleepy mode yes. enabled. We made it. I love you, Cora. I love you too. I love you too. Oh dear. Oh man, do I have things to say? I'll set this wrap up. This tender moment. Tender for some, perhaps. Okay, cool. So, let's... Let's start with the... Obvious question. I... Well, the obvious question for me, certainly given that, um, that reminder at the end there, I want to know about Amanda. So Amanda is, as we find out when we go to, whatever, Elon Musk's house, um, Amanda is the persona that is being used by the AI that runs or is behind or is within Cyberlife. Um, this persona was a previous CEO, previous um, uh, compatriot of Elon Musk's um, character. Um, and she has been, you know, chatting with Connor and he always met with her and it was a bit weird because we never saw him leave or go there in the first place. And then, oh look, it turns out it's all in his head and it's fine, that's how that works. Um, and this was Cyberlife's plan all along, to initiate deviancy, to push humans away so that then androids would rise up and then 
Cyberloper be in control of a Android insurrection, right? So, a few things. One, what's going on with this AI? They have an AI that is just a program, that is not an embodied entity, which I have a lot of questions about, but they probably just did it without thinking about it, so maybe we can let that one slide. I still want to know more about it, though. Uh, two, what kind of a plan is that? Uh, three, is that why they programmed androids to have suffering and whatnot? But the whole deviancy thing is the narrative logic to have them, to give them the ability to rise up and take over, to give them the urge to do so, they had to instill within them um, the ability to do so within within um, what we would consider to be human means. So feeling pain and resentment. Basically, did they create a conscious slave caste so that when that conscious slave caste rebelled, they could control said conscious slave caste that was already controlled? Like, I don't know that that's the spin, and I would hope that it isn't. Just had a lot of inquiries about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, the story on this is soft like shelf-stable cream cheese. You are right, Graffy, you are 100% correct. Um, yeah, no resolution on Connor, well lit weenie. We didn't even have to bust out of the program this time, we just sort of, um, because the program took us back over, wah! Um, yeah, yeah. <sighs> and the, the, um, yeah, yeah, well it weenie. Making a slave race is pretty evil. And that's like, this is what Cyberlife has done. And this is the, okay, so this is the other thing that I wanted to talk about. So I've been doing, um, reading for the exegesis, and I found an article last week, or the week before, um, by Darko Suvin, who I've mentioned before, he's one of the big names when it comes to uh, SF theory, um, certainly back in the, you know, uh, late 70s, early 80s time frame. Oh shit! That, oh wow, I didn't, I didn't know we were getting more. I'll take more. Well, this is a future where Connor didn't shoot himself in the head, so yeah, we can hang out, we can be buds. I'll take that. I'll take that little moment. <laughs> Everyone wants smoochies. Oh man. Look, I... I don't disagree. I think it'd be a fine way to end it. Um... Yeah. <laughs> We're all lit weenie. <laughs> Raw dogging behind the bins of a chicken shop. Motherfucker. Oh damn. <laughs> Oh shit, son. Oh, I love it. All right. <laughs> okay. I have been thoroughly, I have been thoroughly sidetracked. Ah, oh, see, the Minsky tapes written by Marvin Minsky and Philip Shepard. I need to look into that. Okay. Oh, David Cage wrote the opening theme. That's interesting. I, okay, so he can write music as well. Sure. Um, shame he can't write a game that I like. Yes, Darko Subin. Um, so... Darko Suvin had, in his mind, a very, what I would call, restrictive view of what science fiction is. And he was, in his day, one of the few people to pull together a coherent attempt at a definition that had an um, internal logic and could be used to apply to texts to A, get useful information out of them, look at them in, in different ways and different perspectives, but also B, just sort of guide SF criticism along a path and start sort of reining in what is and isn't SF. Um, the more time has gone on, the more theorists I've read, I think this gatekeeping is fucking reductive. I think it is... I don't know that it is such a good idea. I think talking about definitions, it's great to have that conversation, but I think trying to categorically say this is and this isn't science fiction is not a great idea. Um, that being said, Suvin's approach has largely remained one of the most rigorous ways to interrogate a text, so it's still worth applying when it can be applied. Now here's the funky thing. So, like I said, Darko Suvin's definition, very narrow. Um, or narrow in terms of what it will accept as, as worthwhile and as capable of being analysed in his very socio-political context. Uh, he described four... so one type of optimum, an optimal SF text, and then four different kinds of pessimums, a pessimal 
SF text, and one of them struck my fucking eye uh, because it is the dogmatic pessimism, uh, which is basically what Detroit Become Human is. So it has a novum, it has this novelty element, it has the conscious android. The problem with the dogmatic pessimism is that it doesn't interrogate that nearly enough. We don't spend nearly enough time talking about the fact that they have created conscious machines. They, they just are like people. And in fact, the entire plot exists to take us through a, a, a framework and interrogate a, a historical framework that they're already well familiar with, which is to say um, racism, which is to say the problems that black people have, specifically in fucking Detroit. And okay, they don't live the exact life that these androids did because they push the boat out on, you know, how these androids are our servants, but they didn't look into any of the sort of science fictional stuff they could have. They just used science fiction dressing. They used science fiction Thousand Island and just sprayed it all over a historical context and went, here's your fucking game. And it made it entirely predictable. It makes it entirely shallow. Um, and I can see why, I can see why you would want to gatekeep that, right? I, I still don't agree with gatekeeping, but I, I'm, I, you know, when you look at these sort of definitions, you go, okay, I'm trying to figure out like what SF is. And when you try and figure out what science fiction is, you'll end up stumbling across what science fiction isn't, right? And this, I can see why people might be like, nah, this is bullshit. I would call this a harmful plot and a bad text on a lot of axes. I'll still say that it's science fiction because it uses the coding and it initiates a conversation and it can be linked to other science fiction texts. I prefer the mega text uh, idea of Broderick, but yeah, this is a dogmatic pessimism. It was always going to end with people fucking singing on the barricades or storming the Bastille or whatever. It was always going to have some sort of pre-existing plan it does not create estrangement. There is no moment where you look at this and I say there's no moment. For some, for some people there might be. Certainly for me, and I would presume a bunch of other folk as well, there is no moment in this where you've got that great reeling feeling like, oh, what if, what if our world was like this? Motherfucker, it already is. We already have racism. We already have Detroit, you know? Okay, we don't have them in this exact way, but you didn't interrogate what this exact way means. You just made them people with LEDs. And it's just, it's shallow and frustrating. Um, yeah, but I thought I would share that. This was a little bit of theory that I was actually able to link directly to a game. I'll be using Detroit Become Human as my example of dogmatic pessimisms in my exegesis. So after 10 nights of playing it, uh, still worthwhile. Um, yeah. Oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, well, it, well, it's not fantasy. It's, it's interesting, right? Like, a lot of the um, shit-kicking that has gone on when it comes to um, what is and isn't science fiction, or SF, SF being the uh, academic abbreviation for science fiction. But when it is academic, when it is worthwhile, it is SF, and when it is not, it is sci-fi, and when it isn't even close, it's fantasy, right? Like, when you're, when you're drawing that line and trying to kick everyone else off of the stage, you're either kicking at sci-fi stuff like this, or, you know, back in the day, trashy dime store novel, whatever, um, or you're kicking at fantasy, um, because fantasy lacks the cognitive depth, right? It doesn't interrogate what it's doing, it just runs with it. Um, there's more to it than that, I'm sort of giving it a really um, bland um, description there. But you could fucking say that of Detroit Become Human, you could say that of Star Wars, and people have. I, I used to be like, oh, Star Wars isn't um, sci-fi, it's, it's fantasy. And I think that's an interesting talking point. At the end of the day, we still classify it as science fiction for a lot of reasons, not least of all because um, we use genres as a marketing tool, we being humanity, uh, and to even have conversations about it, you know, I'm not going to be like, did you see the latest fantasy movie and then expect people to think I'm talking about Star Wars, right? Like, the point of language is to share ideas, and if you're being obtuse because you think you're smart, you're not actually helping anyone, so. Oh dear. Alright, well, you guys are ranting about that slash, um, as I would invite you to do. It is 7.41, uh, I'm going to kick back to the menu, I'm gonna fucking close the stream, so stay in the chat, keep hanging out, because I'll be back in a minute or two with Tearaway, and we will start up um, a new game. Well, not a new game of Tearaway, we'll start Tearaway, we'll play that, and we'll fuck around for a while, we'll celebrate. Um, thank you guys, thank you for being along with me on this journey, thank you for joining me for the re-ending, the good ending, the goodest ending we could get. Um, yeah. I'll see you in a minute.